right, first up today, since we're talking about bugs, we decided to bring in an expert. Our next guest went to college and majored in the study of insects. What? Now he teaches other people about these pesky creatures and takes questions from people all over the state in workshops, expos, and other events. How about that? PJ Leash is the director of the UW-Madison Insect <laughs> Diagnostic Lab. He's a one-man show, so apparently he's the only staff member of the lab. He is also an instructor in pesticide application. Job security. A member of the Wisconsin master gardener program and a regular guest on wisconsin public radio we're not making fun of you it's just i mean that's quite something what you do i have a lot of feathers in my cap yeah. <laughs> yes you do it's great to meet you pleasure to Thanks be here. Being here our executive producer heard about you she's on vacation this week mm -hmm. she was so excited to have you here I mean, not only said, excited but she called you the get of the century yes she's like, i she can't said. wait and then she's yes. not even here today so yeah. she's like super bummed <laughs> So let's talk about it. How did you de decide to become? It's an entomologist, yes. right? Yep. What was it? Were your parents like, I'm so proud. He's a bug guy. <laughs> well, so I actually grew up in Racine County, just south of here. And as a kid, I spent an awful lot of time outdoors. Um, I swear my childhood job was catching salamanders and toads and fireflies and things like that. So I, I grew up outside looking at animals, that sort of thing. Once I got into high school, I really fell in love with biology in yeah. general. And then in college, right around the time that emerald ash borer was hitting the scene, mm -hmm. yeah. we hadn't found it in the state here, but I had two years of a summer job helping do surveys for it in the state. So I was looking around southeastern Wisconsin. We didn't find it quite then. This was back about 2005 or so, yeah. but that got my foot in the door. And then after that, I went to Madison for a graduate degree in entomology and uh, have been around Madison for about 12 years now. Pretty cool. You. That is pretty cool. Um, I want to, does everybody ask you about mosquitoes first and foremost? <laughs> So this time of year in particular, mosquitoes yeah. are, are often one of the top questions I get. How bad are they going to be this year? Do you know well, that? It always depends on the weather, especially yeah. the rainfall. And the reason for it is mosquitoes need water. Mm -hmm. Their juvenile stage, the larvae and pupae develop in water, and then the adults come out above the water. So if right. we have a year in general with above average rainfall, you're probably going to have a lot of mosquitoes. So and this, we are above average, oh yeah. right? Way, yeah. yeah. Yep. That doesn't so sound good. Many parts of the state do have very high mosquito pressure at the moment. The main pickup I've noticed this year, it can vary quite a bit in mm -hmm. terms of where you're located in Wisconsin. Some areas are a little bit quieter than what I would have guessed. Other areas, I was up north recently, they were pretty bad up in the north. Uh. Do you as a bug guy have like an empathy or compassion towards mosquitoes? Like do you kind of like feel like they're misunderstood and you sort of like them? Or are you they like get a bad rap? the rest of the world and like they could go away for good? Well, that's an interesting topic. Uh -huh. I mean, if you look at mosquitoes in Wisconsin, we have about 60 different species alone. Not all of those like to bite people. Um, they do some good things. They're food for a wide range of animals. Like so, who? Well, Frogs. birds, toads, uh, fish, um, some mammals will eat them. So lots of things can rely on them as part of their diet. Um, they are also pollinators in some cases, so they do some good things. Um, I think a better question would be, if we could go in and pick a few bad apples in the mosquito <laughs> bundle, take out those couple that contribute to a lot I of diseases. I feel like you could do that. Like that. Couldn't you create some sort of virus as a bug guy that just kills those? <laughs> <laughs> That's your next job. You'll be like, yeah. Are you somebody who in the mosquitoes books. like? Do you get big welts? You know, I usually don't react a whole lot to mosquitoes. Um, See, it, it's, yeah. It's interesting. Some folks definitely are mosquito magnets where the mm -hmm. mosquitoes just go to them. Differences in carbon dioxide, heat, skin chemistry, and so on. Um, some people are more attractive and some people really welt up the, when the mosquitoes get to you. Myself, not so much. Mm -hmm. What about, we can talk about mosquitoes more, but what about spiders? Because mm -hmm. they're, I don't know if it's a, an urban legend, but there, mm -hmm. there are a lot of studies that say on an average night, well, look at that web, that's crazy. That on an average night, or, um, you know, or in a year, people swallow something like two to three spiders a year or something like that while they're sleeping. So I've heard that. I, I don't think it's true at all. Um, you know, could it happen in theory? I suppose yes. But when you think about spiders, first of all, we're not food for spiders. Yeah. They're hunting insects and, and things like that. Also, a lot of spiders are very sensitive to um, pressure changes and vibrations and things mm. like that. So imagine a person lying there, and first of all, we're massive compared to spiders. So this big, massive object, um, you have a pulse, so you got vibration from that. If you're lying on your back and snoring, that's mm -hmm. noise and vibration. It'd be like us trying to climb a mountain where there's an earthquake going on. We'd probably say, uh-uh, no way. So the idea that spiders would crawl on us, get in our mouth, I think it's pretty far-fetched. Good. Okay. 
I'm glad that All you right. said that. Mm -hmm. That just sounds good. Yeah. What about ticks this year? Because I do think like a lot of people, you know, especially kids as you grow up, we want to get outside more. A lot of it, we're talking about kind of this back to nature movement. How are the ticks going to be? Ticks definitely uh, active. I've gotten a lot of tick reports uh, at the Insect like Diagnostic Lab and oh. colleagues have been seeing a lot uh, as well. With ticks, so I like to look at the bigger picture. Um, so we have two main species of ticks in the state, wood tick uh, or American dog tick. That's a common one most yeah. folks have bumped into. The interesting story is with the deer tick. Um, this is really something we've watched over the last 50, 60 years. We didn't find our first deer tick in Wisconsin to mid to late 1960s. Today we can find them in nearly every county in the state. And deer ticks can carry Lyme, yeah. anaplasmosis, babesiosis. At the moment, about 20% of the juvenile deer ticks are carrying Lyme. So that's a scary number. Last year in the state, we had over 3,000 Lyme disease cases. So And deer ticks have something that signifies them, right? Don't they have a, well, a dot or something? You can look at the color pattern, but deer oh. ticks are pretty small, so it's okay. helpful to get it under magnification. There's color patterns, um, some other features I like to look at under the microscope to confirm. Stuff that only you know. Okay, yeah, fine. We're, we're gonna play a <laughs> we're gonna play a game with you, and it's okay. real or fake because there are a lot of questions I wanted to ask you about lice, and we wanted to talk about bed bugs, so we'll have to do that another time. Um, but we have this real or fake game for you, so okay. I'm gonna show you and Tiff can guess. I don't too. know these answers. Is this is this Hopefully insect real or fake? and then we will reveal the answer. Okay. So this is the assassin bug. So that's real. Well, I'm gonna oh. go real then. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. Okay. okay. <laughs> I gotta read these upside down. So the mercenary beetle. Real. Mercenary, I have not heard of that one. So you say fake? I'm guessing fake. Oh, and you both guys right. Okay. All right, what about the vampire moth? Fake. So there are vampire moths. Real. Real. Okay. Uh, I'm going slow. Yeah. Um, Death's head hawk moth. Fake. Real. He's right again. <laughs> He's right all the time. If you lose, that would be the bad. The grim reaper wasp. Real. I'm going to say, I don't think I've heard of that one. Fake. He's right. Fake. Okay. Um, now this is, how do I say this? Daenerys dragonfly. Real. Because who would make that up? <laughs> Absolutely fake. Oh. It's fake oh. because it's a character on what show? Game of Thrones? Oh, okay. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. All right. There you go. The tiger mosquito. Oh, uh, real. That one's real. Oh. Oh, you're both right, right for once. <laughs> okay. All right. Ant Man. Uh, fake. Fake. <laughs> is that what I knew? <laughs> you guys are That's right. Awesome. Um, okay. I what wish about he was real? The one of my favorites. The horned devil. Uh, real. That one is real. Ooh. Because he had everyone right. Yeah, every single one. The Molly Pede. Uh, fake. <laughs> what do you think? Fake. Legs for Check days. Check out the picture. So, ma so <laughs> many great legs. <laughs> <laughs> so many great legs. That was so great to meet you. Thank you Pleasure so much. Here. Paul, our multimedia producer, uh, put together the real fake game. That for was us. fun. You can follow PJ online. He's WI Bug Guy and find out more. Ask him your questions. Do all the fun stuff. You'll answer them. It's great. Thanks for being here. Stick around. You should stick around for our Sunday show. That'd Will be do. great. We'll yeah. talk about lice and other things then. Yeah. <laughs> and bed bugs. Thank yeah. you so much.